Hello Fearless Gamers, Matt here for Fearless Games, and today I'm going to do an unboxing video for my Dystopian Wars items. I've been meaning to do this video for quite some time, actually, ever since Christmas, when um, I purchased the um, Naval Battle set. Actually, no, I didn't do that. Um, it was just whenever the um, Touching Base episode was when we announced the contest giveaway, that was when I ordered the Naval Battle set. But I actually got a, one of these items for Christmas, and so I've been meaning to do an unboxing thing, and now that I have some free time, we're going to do that today. So, let's get this camera moving around. <sighs> Sorry about my hand in the way. Okay, so we're going to be opening a Federated States of America Naval Battle Group and the Federated States of America Enterprise Class Dreadnought. Um, this is the one I actually got two of. The Stark Lord gave me one for Christmas, and I purchased myself one for Christmas as well, figuring he was probably going to get me, like, the regular battleship you can find in this guy. Because I figured, oh, you can only have one of these. He's not going to do the super thing. He's probably going to get me, you know, something that's more practical. And, of course, I was completely wrong. So I ended up having two of these, and thankfully we found out you can have two of them in your army if your army's big enough. So we can... So that's really good because I like the super vehicles over the regular standard stuff. So let's go ahead and do an unboxing. I'm going to open... Um, I already have one of these opened up, so we're just going to use that for this, just to make life a little bit easier. And the first thing when you open up this box is the first thing you get is a stat card that has the stats of your, of your ship, and then on the back, it lists general information, um, what it counts as, how many of them you can have, you and stuff like that, and your special rules and options for the item on the back of the card. Very much like um, the War Machine stuff and the Horde stuff. And then what you actually get in the box is you get this really nice resin-casted ship. And as you can see, it's all one piece. Minusing like a couple of the extra bits and the bridge piece that goes here to so you can paint the detail inside there like this thing is really crazy detail on this thing even down to the deck planks on the thing and little tiny stairs and doorways going down to the bottom like you don't see anything like this except for like forge world based stuff so it's really nice to see a company go all out full detail in just the basic stuff that you can get for them and you know it's got little got the little rivets and all that's really cool like I said mad crazy detail and there was next to no cleanup like I have to do a little bit of cleanup there and fill in a couple of little like holes but and all in all, this basically, right out of the box, can be just used as is. I don't need to really do any cosmetic cleanup changes to it, unlike I, unlike a lot of the models I have to do in the 40k game. Which is nice, you know, especially, you know, when you're starting to do multiple games, you want to be able to just have, you know, one where you can just pop out the box and not do anything, no prep work. And one thing I notice is that it's very smooth and clean. Um, I don't feel any release agent on the item, which makes me think to believe that they didn't use a release agent on these models, which if they don't, really awesome. Again, makes prepping the model a lot easier. I'm still probably going to wash them just to be on the safe side, but I may test it out to see if I really had to wash them or not. And then it comes with, you know, one little piece here. This is the bridge piece that snaps into place on there. I had to do a little bit of modification to get it to fit, but again, for the most part, these pieces are, you know, out of the box, bam, fits right in, you know. There was just a couple, like, little, it was just a little bit too much, too wide for this piece, but it was only, like, a little bit. I just had to file it for, like, you know, a minute, not even, and I was able to get it in there nice and easy. And then you also have a bag of the extra bits. These basically come with the upgrades that the ship's allowed to have. So, like, it comes with two generate, um, shield generators right there. And they basically, and they sit pretty much right up top there. And they make it really easy to figure out that it's, like, it's kind of self-explanatory. And then they got these pewter gun turrets. Most of the gun turrets in this game seem to be made out of pewter. And what's neat is, is they're weighted just right where you don't need to glue them or magnetize them at all. You can just literally pop them in, they'll sit, they'll turn... You know, they don't 
they don't, um, you know, the only way they pop out is if you flip them over on their side. And so you can easily just pop, remove them without having to do any, again, next to no maintenance and less supplies you need to purchase in order to build your models, which is really awesome. And so we got all that. And then we've got the Naval Battle Set. This is probably the most common thing that you would want to pick up first. They have a naval battle set, a land battle set, and they just announced a aerial battle set as well. And so if we pop this open, this is what we get inside. We get a bunch of card stocks that has a bunch of mar markers, templates for like explosions and such, some other markers that I have no idea what they're used for, and turning templates. This is probably, these things are probably the only thing that I have an issue with. And that issue is, they're not pop-outable. So you can't pop these guys out and make, you can't pop them out to um, ensure that you get a nice clean cut on them. So the, you run the risk of maybe slicing them and altering how the turn pattern is. Which is one thing I'm not a fan of, but it's nothing to the point where I would say, oh, you know, it's the worst part and and totally um, talk down about the set. It's just one minor thing that doesn't really affect my opinion on the game or the, or the product itself. It's just a little pet peeve for me. Then we get a bag full of the medium class cruisers. Bag with the large cru class cruiser. Bag full of tiny bits in the fighters and a bag full of the baby ships. And so, again, pop these all out of here. We've got this, again, great, fresh out of the box, no need to do any alterations or cosmetic cleanups on the, on the vessel, which is really nice. So you get one, like, battleship type of set. Then you get, with these guys, three cruisers. Again, fresh right out of the bag don't need to clean them up just can pop them out of the bag and start painting and a bag full of tiny little escort vessels which even down to these guys they even they still throw in the same level of detail in these ships that they do in the big ships which is really nice there's a little bit of cleanup that I need to do on these but again most of it is just removing some flash from the model and then they're good to go so what's real and what I again what's great is the fact that they throw in the same level of detail even on the tiny ships that they do on the really big ships so they really put a hundred ten percent when making these models then in the little tiny bag of extra bits we've got the flight stands for the ship for the airplanes which these are also pewter but they're, again, really clean models. Like, I didn't do anything to these. These are how they came to me. So they came really nice, crisp, fresh. Looks like the first model they made from the um, molds. Granted, I don't know if the, game, if the game really jumps off. I don't know how long this type of quality is going to last. But I hope it lasts a while with this, with this game system. And then they've got... The upgrade pieces for the battleship here, so it's like a missile pod, missile pod generator, or shield generator, on the thing, and missile turret, little missile turrets as well for it. Like I like one of the things I do like about this is that they basically give you all the upgrades you'll need. So it's not like oh if you need this bit, yo know, you, you need to buy this kit if you want to get that bit. You need to buy that kit if you want to get that bit. No, they go okay. If the ship has this bit, this bit, this bit. Here's all the bits to do every upgrade that you can that you're allowed to do on the vessel. Again, they give you the pewter gun turrets, which again don't require any alteration, gluing, or magnetizing. Then they give you these tiny little fighter tokens. And even these guys have a lot of crazy little details on them. So it's really nice to see all that. And this is going to be a pain in the butt for me. Because I've never painted anything this small before. Um, except for the, um, the markers for my Battlefleet Gothic. But they're so, like, they're so small and tiny I didn't even bother with them. But, like, there's some detail in here that I may not, that I probably won't be able to get away with just painting over. And it'll give me a nice practice 
for if I ever decide to do Flames of War, which I highly doubt because I just don't like the size of the models in that game. But if you're a Flames of War player, then these tokens will be no challenge whatsoever. And that is it inside here. And of course, like with the other game, you also get stat cards on each of the models inside the box set. So, on a whole, it's a really nice setup that you're getting. And the box set, the naval box set here, was only about $54, $55, 60 with, with, with tax on it, which is not a bad deal. So you're getting all of this for 60 bucks. And this guy here, the super ship, was 25. So he's 25 for the super ship, so you know now, like, he's probably, like, like um, from what I did recent, um, in my last web search on their website, the super ship is the most expensive ship in all the, in the faction. So $25 for your most expensive model, like 15 bucks, 10 bucks for the more common ships that you're probably going to pick up for the game. So investment-wise, this game is a lot cheaper than, say, Warhammer 40,000 or War Machine. So, it's really a nice setup, and once me and the Stark Lord get these all painted up and figure out what, um, figure out the rules, we'll set up a date to play a game, and we'll post it on the site so you guys can see an active game of Dystopian Wars to help see if you decide that this is a game for you or not. So, that is all for right now. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, Fearless Gamers, take care!